Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. I'm a licensed tile and general bee contractor in Northern California, and thank you for being with us today. So, one of the most common requests, uh, both questions and requests for videos, is how to turn a tub setup like this, so a regular alcove tub, uh, how to turn a tub setup into a walk in shower with either a curb or curbless entry. In this case, we're going to go curbless. So I wanted to make this video for you because it's such a common request. And so I'm just gonna show you start to finish on how we do this. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss this video. So one of the reasons why I get this request so often is that um, as people get older, it's harder and harder to step over a tub to get in and take a shower. I mean, it's just kind of cumbersome. And, and especially as, as people are aging in their homes, maybe they get 70, 80, even 90 years old in their home, uh, this is like a trip hazard. It's just, it's not good for somebody to have this in their home. So by taking this out, um, we're, really, uh, we're really providing an upgrade. The only time I would recommend leaving a bathtub in a home is if maybe you have small children, it's a lot easier to bathe babies and, and you know kids, but once they turn six or seven years old, they're usually done using the bathtub. So a lot of these homes where we have these bathtubs, they're never used. I mean, literally like never used, maybe once a year or something. So uh, to make it more practical, it's a lot better to make a step-in, walk-in, or curbless entry shower. So uh, this bathroom here, I would say is probably 20 to 25 years old. I can just tell by the tile. This was a Home Depot special. I think they still might even stock it at the Home Depots, but it had a great run. Uh, it's a nice look, kind of a, a stately, traditional, vintage look with the octagon and dot pattern on the floor. Uh, this tile for a mosaic from Dow Tile was a great price point, still is. I think you can get it for under five bucks a foot. It's three or four dollars a square foot. The wall tile, I think, is even like 99 cents a square foot, this four by four white. And then um, it was the, the 100 white was the code on the Dow Tile, and then the black one is K111. So I think they even still have that available at Home Depot, but great price point. Was, was probably when this was done, it probably looked beautiful, but it's 20 to 25 years old. It's held up, it's done its deal. I don't see any cracked tiles or anything. The tub is a little rusted out and um, plumbing fixtures more than anything probably need to be replaced. But we're gonna go in um, not only with a more functional design for this bathroom with the um, curbless shower, but we're gonna do a beautiful modern design um, with some some large format tile, 12 by 24 is on the wall, 18 by 36 is on the floor. We're gonna be doing a linear drain, uh, Brizo fixtures. Uh, I mean, this is gonna be just a knockout bathroom. It's gonna be beautiful. So really excited to get started on it. So stay tuned, you don't wanna miss this video. Okay, so Kirk has done a great job on recessing this concrete slab to accommodate a curbless entry. So basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, when we build the shower, we're gonna have a glass panel here, we're gonna have a door hinged here, and you're gonna come in. The entire floor is gonna be sloped this way. So it's gonna be curbless here, and then it's gonna drain down um, into the waste pipe down here with a linear drain. So what we had to do is chip away this concrete and uh, we, we try to do what we aim for is just chip enough away that allows us to get a good mortar bed on top of it. So we take about uh, an inch at minimum and then we go a little deeper. We're about three inches down here on the drain side and that's going to allow us uh, to do a bonded mortar bed. We'll do a, a cement. We'll do a thin set slurry and then do our deck mud and slope everything and then waterproof it. Um, but yeah, so we had to chip away this concrete and that's a question I get asked a lot uh, is about curbless entry. And then um, I just tell our customers, they say, well, it takes about a day. Is that about right, Kirk? 
about a day to jackhammer and recess this yes. floor and get it ready. So um, yeah, so we're at a point now where we can start hooking up the plumbing. We got a nice uh, recessed area. And when you're, when you're calculating how much uh, to chip out for a recessed, we, uh, we have our line drain and we wanted a 32 inch shower. So we went 33 and that's gonna allow us enough room. If we center this drain, you definitely wanna make sure you're counting for your wall thickness and your tile overhanging here so it doesn't get in the way of the linear drain. So this calculation here is gonna vary depending on how big your shower is and how big your line drain is. So we're, we're at a pretty good place here to start the plumbing. So in this house, which was built in probably, I would say, the early 60s is my guess, because uh, it has cast iron piping. They do have copper water supply lines, so it was probably right at the very beginning of using copper. Before that, they were using galvanized pipe. Uh, so, but anyways, uh, we have to deal with cast iron. Uh, this is actually the old trap here. So this trap was in here. Yeah, I'm gonna take my little fern coat fitting off here. And so this was, this was in here just like this for the tub. So we took out an old tub and it was sitting in here just like this. Zach, maybe you can get a close up shot. This is how this was sitting. So this is cast iron pipe. We took a sawzall and cut that piece of pipe off to get this, but you can see the cast iron also was, you know, it's sloughing off on the outside and everything because this is buried. Uh, so we, when we cut it, we also took uh, our emery cloth, took our emery cloth and we sanded it down and cleaned that pipe up real good. And what we're gonna do is use a fern co fitting, a shielded fern co fitting, and that's gonna connect our cast iron to our new ABS trap setup. So that's, if you do have cast iron, um, get these rubber couplings and that's a great way to do it. And I've heard that the shielded ones, so they have shielded and unshielded, and the ones with the shield on them are the ones that get buried underground. So that's one thing I learned from you guys, my viewers. Uh, I got, got a comment on that because I didn't know the difference. So again, that's all of us helping each other out here to get better. So that Fernco is gonna connect my, our ABS here and we have another fern co on the top. So once we get our trap in there like that, our line drain is going to sit in here. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of, of space here between the wall for one, we don't have room for our trap. And for two, it makes for better waterproofing when you're either off of the wall this way or off of your side walls. And since we're gonna be really tight on our side, um, in order to get our two inch overlap with a curdy, I like to leave a gap. So we're probably gonna leave two or three inches here uh, and that'll we'll just put another cut piece of tile. It'll still look really good, but that'll allow for a better waterproofing lap there. So uh, when, we, when we get the height on, the, on this line drain, uh, this, this stub out, the standpipe for our trap, that has to be calculated to get the right height <laughs> in order to get our drain where it needs to be. So if we're using TCNA recommendations of a quarter inch per foot, uh, we're gonna have zero here. We got about a four and a half foot run. I'm gonna, I'm gonna count it as five. So we need an inch and a half drop from that point there to this point here. So, and it, did I say inch and a half? Inch and a quarter. So inch and a quarter. Five feet uh, times quarter inch is an inch and a quarter. So we gotta get this drain. I, wanna, I want this drain to be sitting down because this surface is gonna be flush with the tile surface out here, an inch and a quarter. So our drain needs to be an inch and a quarter down. That's how we calculated the length of, the, of this standpipe here. So this standpipe could have been cut up higher or lower. And the way we attach uh, the curdy drains to any ABS pipe, because it's stainless steel output, another Fernco fitting, they do have their own uh, rubber fitting 
to connect. It's just a two inch coupler, two inch to two inch. Since this was an old tub, which is an inch and a half, we actually need a reducer. So it's gonna reduce from two inches here to inch and a half pipe on here, like this. So we're going two and a half, two inch to inch and a half, and that's how our fitting works. So uh, another question I get a lot is about um, two inch versus inch and a half in a tub in a shower. So tubs are typically plumbed with an inch and a half waist, waistline. Showers, typically two inch. So if we can do two inch, great. But if we can't get to, you know, say something like this where the fittings are all buried in the concrete, we would have had to jackhammer out a large area. This would have been a ton more work to do. So we just stick with inch and a half because it, it makes sense that a tub has a lot more water going down it when you pull a plug than a shower, especially in California, we have a 1.75 gallon per minute flow rate for shower heads. I mean, that's like a trickle coming out of there. So a uh, inch, inch and a half is more than enough to accommodate a shower. And I even asked the city inspector, uh, we did a job a couple months ago, I asked him about it because the job was getting permitted. And he said what his, their answer was, their policy for the city was, if you can change it out, if, if it's say a second story or a wood subfloor with a crawl space, if you can change it out, they will require you to change everything two inch going into the trunk line. If you can't get to it, say concrete slab foundation downstairs, they say it's okay to use an inch and a half and reduce it. So that's what we're doing in this case. Since we have concrete, we're going with inch and a half. And if you have different thoughts, leave your comments in the section below. I'd like to hear it, but we're going to go with inch and a half here. So, um, when you do tear out your tub, you're going to find you have inch and a half waste pipe. You'll have to make the call on whether you want to just uh, reduce it right at the drain, or if you want to take it all the way back into the sewer trunk line and go two inch from there. So sometimes it's easy. Sometimes it's not that that's a call that you're going to have to make. So, um, that's that we're going to have the way that this is going to fit here. We're going to have a setup that looks like this. Always have to have a trap under your drain. What the trap does is it traps sewer gases so that um, so sewer gases can't come up into the room. So you need this trap here that's filled up with water. And that's gonna just sit in something like that. And then we'll wrap the pipe, fill this all with concrete, and create the mortar bed, and that'll be the next step. So um, Zach's going to go ahead and glue this fitting up and get it ready. getting the hydrovan cementitious on. Uh, we have our Laticrete hydrovan sheet membrane down, our curdy drain in. Uh, we got that thin set it in with custom speed set, right Kirk? So what we did? Speed set? Yes, custom speed set. So now we're getting the uh, hydrovan cementitious on, just to give us an added layer of waterproofing. This is uh, what we've been using instead of the Ardex 8 plus 9 because you only have to mix it with water and it actually tested out better head-to-head uh, -head against Ardex 8 plus 9. So we've been happy with it, we've been stocking it, uh, we've been using our trowel to put it on. Again, this is just a second layer of protection. Uh, we probably could have been okay with just the hydroband sheet membrane. But um, we're, we're doing the seams and 
and uh, about eight, 10 inches up the wall. And we'll go ahead and cover our membrane. So we got a, a bunch of videos on waterproofing using these methods. If you, if you want to check out those videos, I'll put the link in the description so you can see those. Uh, some of these videos, I don't want to be redundant. I've made bunches of videos showing how the step-by-step -step waterproofing, the way we're doing it here. So if you want to check those out again, links in the description. ceiling we like to start full at the top if it allows us to in this case it doesn't in this case we're going to have a small cut at the top of the niche and a small cut at the bottom and a very small cut at the floor if you see here so I like to use the layout stick because then I don't make a mistake on my measurements so there's full tile so if you look closely I mean we we have barely an inch at the bottom so I'm not going to go with that so what I did was I centered the wall and I'm going to have a big half at the top and a big half at the bottom the shower pan is almost five feet and we do a quarter of an inch per slope. So it slopes into a line drain and it's going to be about an inch, approximately an inch and a quarter bigger on this end than this end. So I centered the wall here and gave the same size cut at the top and the bottom. And now what I'm going to do, could you hand me that four foot level please, Lee? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a mark so I can measure this size on the right side to the size I've already got and then we can draw a line point to point so we can cut a nice straight line. Okay, so we're finally at the finish line for this bathroom and our client Lisa, she's very happy. It's actually a really cool story. She found us on YouTube and uh, she had called me up and I think she saw one of my videos on Schluter and just had a question because she had already gotten an estimate from another tile guy who had mentioned Schluter and she was like, well, what's Schluter? And he couldn't really explain it so she looked it up you know, she just Googled about Schluter and my videos popped up and she found out I was in the area. So uh, that was really cool. Then we, we started working for her uh, and we were able to build this beautiful bathroom and turn her tub into this beautiful walk-in uh, curbless shower. So uh, I'll just kind of go through everything, but um, we used a, a really nice porcelain tile. This is a made in the USA. This is a, a Marazzi tile, this porcelain made in, the, made in the USA. 12 by 24, we did a stack pattern, horizontal stack. Uh, we had some discussions on the layout because you could do this several different ways. You could have it horizontal, you can have it vertical, you can stagger it or you can stack it. I thought this bathroom lended itself really nicely to a stack. To me, it gives it more of a modern feel, maybe kind of a zen feel. It just, uh, maybe Japanese to me, that's the feel I get when I do this and I just thought this bathroom fit it really nicely. But we have 12 by 24 on the walls. We went with 18 by 36 on the floor. So we did a large tile. Uh, what that allowed us to do was one tile wide in the shower floor. So that's really cool. Minimize the grout joints and the tile is non-slip so it'll work really good when it's wet. Uh, we do have a line drain and a single slope so everything is sloping one direction into the drain. We do have our curdy linear drain that we put in here. So this is their tileable grate and it comes out really easily for cleaning 
Again, we always like to grout finish in here. A lot of people will just put their tile and the thin sets kind of goopy in here. Uh, when you grout it, it gives a nice cleanable surface because this will need to be cleaned in here. Be very careful when you're taking these in and out because the edges can chip. Uh, but that's that's a really nice finish. We ended up using a Schluter A100 profile right here. So that gave us the transition between the main floor and the shower floor. Uh, this color is, I think it's TSC is the code. It blends really nicely. And then we also used a Schluter profile on the edges here. And that's a really nice way to finish off the edges. And I get a lot of questions about how to trim out when we float because we float our walls. And so when we float, it builds it out at least a half inch right here. And so we cut these plugs and put them in behind uh, the Schluter. So that's a really nice finish there. Blends really nice. I like the colors of the Schluter that kind of blend with the tile, but you can use like a metal finish if you want. Uh, when we float our walls, uh, that allows us to get nice, flat, plumb surfaces. So every, every surface in here is plumb. It makes all of the grout joints even in the corners and it just looks better when you have a nice flat wall and it's gonna last a long time. So uh, we ended up with uh, Brizo fixtures in here. Uh, we got a hand shower, we got a two function shower faucet. We got a valve and then we got a diverter that will control both the handheld on the bar and the shower head. So you can go either this position, this position, or in the middle, both of these will be on at the same time if you wanted it. But again, the hand showers are really nice for ladies. If they don't wanna get their hair wet, they can put the bar down. And if you want the full effect, you can turn on the shower head. So uh, this is gonna be a great shower for Lisa. I'm really glad that we were able to do this. And again, the difference between having a tub, imagine now she's not gonna have to step over a tub to get into and use her shower. It's so nice to just be able to walk right in. You got so much more room here. It's just so much more functional than having the tub in here. Uh, she might miss the bathtub every once in a while, but she might have to get a hot tub. So we used our waypoint cabinet line for the cabinetry. Uh, this is the cherry slate finish, one of our more popular finishes. Uh, it's beautiful. We use some satin nickel hardware just as the jewelry to make it all pop uh, this is a caesar stone color quartz countertop i love it because it's got some warm tones in it too and it's not like a super shiny surface it's it's a more of a, a satin leathered look and caesar stone makes great countertops their quartz is, is it's definitely by far my favorite line Another feature that I really like about this bathroom is we used a smaller sink. This is an American Standard sink. Uh, we used a small square sink instead of a big rectangle. But what that allowed us to do is maximize the counter space here. We got more counter space instead of it being taken all the way up by a sink. We have a nice countertop space here. And uh, it's really functional, practical, because if you're just in here washing your hands, brushing your teeth, you don't need a great big sink all the time. So we did that, we inset the medicine cabinet. So she's got some storage in here and, and it doesn't stick all the way out. So this is from Waypoint here too, but you know, that's about it. Uh, frameless glass doors so we can show off our tile work so that you know, you don't have some curtain or anything in here or any frame. It really allows you to see the tile as you come into the bathroom. We just feel really blessed to have such great clients and people that we work for uh, to kind of uh, just, to just kind of carry out our purpose and be able to build and create these beautiful things. And honestly, it's, it's like such a rewarding job to come in and, and take it from what it was and practical and just kind of run down and create something so beautiful for somebody that's also functional that's going to last a lifetime uh, for a generation this bathroom will still be here so really rewarding to be able to do that if you're looking to get into the building trades uh, leave your comment in the section below you can start networking with some people 
Find me on Instagram if you have any questions. And my advice is always to um, go, go to work for somebody that you respect, that does good work and you want to learn from. Because doing this stuff, sometimes we make it look easier than it really is. So if you go and work for somebody for a couple of years, that'll do two things. It'll, it'll allow you to figure out if this is something you want to do, because it is hard work. And for two, you'll learn valuable lessons from somebody who's already done it and made mistakes before like I have. So anyways, I, I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, make sure to watch the next video coming up. It'll be more instructional videos on how to do stuff like this. And last but not least, guys, I love you. I love being your tile coach. And we'll see you on the next video. Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside?